Hello, y'all. Uh, my name's Hugh. I'm an Australian born, used to be New York City, but now on my way to Berlin resident. Um, I just got a Polish passport, so I'm kind of exercising my right to be there for a little bit before I go back to the US. Um, I'm a full stack developer. I do Rails and Ember largely, do a little bit of React and that stuff, but mainly Ember is my, is my thing. And uh, for the last few years, I've been working on e-commerce, lots of e-commerce stuff. And I think f for like most developers, people get really bored all of a sudden when you say e-commerce, because people are just like, OK, Magento, cool. But I have been like pulling this apart because I worked for this like dev shop in the in the states that was all about like really compelling design, really beautiful user interface, and um, we kept running into the problem where we would have these really ambitious goals for UI, but we wouldn't be able to manage the complexity that came along with it because these were client builds. We'd have like a 12-week cycle, and then we'd have to hand that code base off. So we tried so many things, and we kept running into this, this wall of complexity that comes with e-commerce. It's surprisingly complex when you start really pulling it apart and taking an API-driven approach. There's a lot of state machine stuff, a lot of interlinked models that go out of sync, and kind of some crazy stuff. So it wasn't until I found Ember and Ember add-ons that I got really, really excited because Ember add-ons are kind of like the new jQuery plugin. It's plug and play. It just works. And I can't think of anything else in the JavaScript ecosystem aside from jQuery plugins that really sort of compares to Ember add-ons at the moment. So my goal was to sort of put together a, a shared solution for doing single page e-commerce so that the Ember community could essentially just have an out of the box solution for building an online store. So um, I'm going to like basically show you guys how to get started with it. And then I'm going to live code one of those slide out carts that like when you add to cart, it slides out. And, uh, and you can see the new item that you just put into your cart. So uh, I've just remapped my Vim leader key. So this is like kind of ambitious for me right now. But we'll see how we go. So first thing, I'm just going to do an ember new. Um, and I'm just going to call it store. So that's super uh, creative of me. And I'll just show you guys the site really quick. So um, there's some super, super simple getting started guides. Um, and some of the cool stuff about Spree Ember is that it works as much like a Rails engine as you can build Ember at the moment. So essentially, it uh, has its own store, adapter, and serializer infrastructure so that you can plug it into existing Ember apps, and it'll just work with the Spree Ruby on Rails engine. That Ruby on Rails API can live totally different to your existing servers, so you can basically drop an online store onto any existing Ember app that you've got going at the moment and just mount the API wherever you want, whether it's in your current Rails app or like next to your Node app or next to your Elixir app. So it's, it's kind of cool like that. But uh, there's a bunch of other stuff where we use local storage to sort of uh, persist the current order and the current user. Um, we have sort of a, a plug and play user authentication system, which is a wrapper on Ember Simple Auth. Um, and probably the biggest and coolest thing is this stateful checkout flow, um, which uses a library that was built by um, my buddy Carsten, who lives in Toronto. Uh, he, work, he worked on this library called Ember FSM, which is essentially a, a promise aware state machine that sort of bolts into Ember. Um, and he, <laughs> he built it, and it's really well tested. It's like a science experiment. It's crazy, crazy precise. Um, but it sort of, he hasn't really found a use for it aside from file uploaders. And I needed something that could kind of mimic the way that Spree handles the order state machine. So it's, it's amazing how well these two pieces fit together. And I'll show you guys that in a sec. But um, let me just see how we're going. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that because of our Wi-Fi or? Uh, okay. All right. Well, I've got like a. Um, okay. So get config. Okay. 
Yes, that's the weirdest command ever. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's mad. Okay, let's let's see. We're doing some. I didn't expect to learn that tonight. All right. Well, while that's happening, I'll just show you guys this state machine that I was talking about. It's kind of a cool little thing to check out while waiting. So, um, Spree Ember is built on actually four Ember CLI packages, and they sort of nest inside of each other where it makes sense. Um, it's not really a sort of first class supported thing of Ember CLI, but there's, there's a hacksaw you can do to make it work. You just can't use linting and you can't use other things, but it's cool, it works. Um, so basically, Spree Ember Core is all of the models and things like that uh, that locks directly into, uh, in, into Spree. Um, and then Ember Checkouts is kind of like the checkout functionality. So uh, basically, it ships with this service called Checkouts. And Checkouts basically gives you a way for progressing an order through, through a checkout. So you can basically get its state. You know, it's on state delivery. And then you can transition to address, and you know it clicks back and forward, and it'll give you errors if you're trying to transition to states that, that you can't. And that's because it works with um, this Ember FSM stateful, which if no one, if if you guys haven't heard of it, it's just a lifesaver. It's an amazing thing. So basically, I declared this entire checkout flow just like this. And this is how complex that stuff is. You know, like you don't really think that it's it's crazy hard to do these things, but there's a lot going on. So yeah, it, it's kind of like the answer to crazy complex, uh, Im, you know, sort of, what do you call that? Im, 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 when you aren't programming in like a stateful way or a functional way? It starts with I, I forget yes. now. Imperative, thank you. <laughs> OK, that worked. That's crazy. <laughs> Should I just leave that on? Like, does that setting, is that something I should always have? You should bring up the concrete setting on Spree again. <laughs> 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 All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an Ember install, and I'm just going to do Spree Ember storefront. And while that's happening, so that's just you know classic install stuff, um, I know this is super small, and I'm only going to, yeah, let me. I'm just going to show you the back end really quick. So Spree Ember testing is actually the app that uh, we've got live at testing.spreeember.com, and it's just a Rails app. Um, basically, it's just uh, got Spree installed, and it's got you know a couple of other things that come with Spree. So Spree Gateway is just like a way of using things like Stripe, Braintree, etc., with Spree, and Spree Auth Device is just a wrapper on device for for Auth. Now, Spree AMS is something that basically takes over Spree's API, adds a namespace, and responds as per active model serializes instead of Spree's clusterfuck of Ravel. So that's kind of like the key of making this whole thing work, is just mounting this one gem and adding some routes to the API. Uh, it all inherits from Spree logic. So uh, it's all really well tested. You know, the, the Spree library has been around for something like 10 years now. So it's, uh, it's really solid. Um, so now uh, we're in, in the process of installing Spree Ember storefronts. Um, and it's asking us to overwrite application. So if we look at the diff, all we're doing is adding the Spree nav, and we're getting rid of the, the regular sort of title text. So I'll do yes. And, and basically what Spree Ember does is it installs all of the templates that you're going to need to sort of customize the store uh, straight up. So I'm going to just uh, run this Rails server. And provided you've got that running, you should theoretically be able to do this. Now, that's not going to work, though, because when you're doing uh, engine style stuff, you need to give your host app a whole bunch of routes. And the way we do that Ember style, I'm just going to boot up a uh, Ember server back here. Where did I put that? Uh, 
So the way we do that, Ember style, and it's a convention that you will see every now and then, is you go into your router and you just ins import the Spree router from Spree Ember storefront forward slash router. And then the convention for Spree Ember is to pass the config as well, because that's where you config your custom routes. So if you want to rename products to like items or you know albums, if you're selling digital music or ebooks, you can do that. So also you can uh, sort of pass in uh, a custom mount path, so it doesn't have to be mounted at the root of your your Ember app. So oh. And now we have a full e-commerce that works out of the box with Spree. Pretty neato. Now, I've uh, already got some things in my cart, so just for the sake of you know, doing it right, I'm gonna just going to clear my local storage and do a refresh, and now we've got a fresh order again. So that's kind of how order is persisted. It's just through headers and token authentication. There's a whole heap of deprecations here, and unfortunately that's part of the core Ember development experience at the moment. <laughs> um, but that'll go away very, very soon, guys. It's all good. Um, Alrighty, so now that we've got it running, I'm just going to show you guys kind of how it works and how you can bend it to your will. It's just Ember code. It's super easy to work with. So basically what we're going to do is just write a, a cart that slides out from the side whenever you add to it. So. Um, yeah, let's get going. The first thing that I would do is generate a component. And the Ember convention, uh, the Spree Ember convention is to just prefix everything with Spree. So I'm just going to put this on my application layer. And then, so I'm kind of like using file stuff so that you can see the, the layout of everything. So basically, these are all the components that ship with, uh, with Spree Ember. Um, and you can sort of use them all over the place. They're all pretty handy and pretty easy to work with. Um, so Whoa. Not that. Okay, so here's our component. Um, and now I just kind of know what I need to do to style this. Um, and I know this is kind of boring, but maybe there's some uh, Ember beginners here, so maybe this is useful. Um, I, I always kind of just like to watch other people code and maybe pick up like really tiny little things. Um, so what I always do with components is I always name them with a class name. That matches their name. Um, let's call it 300 pixel. I did this on the bus today, so um, I think I kind of remember how to do it, but I may make some mistakes. I'm just going to do a top of 45 pixels. And anyone got a favorite background color? I really like cool. Are, are you making it up? Or <laughs> That's actually it, or are you making that up? You decide. All right, well, I really like lavender. <laughs> Wait, it's, it's an ER, I think, isn't it? There we go. Okay. Oh, I'm going to need a Z index. Let's call it 9. And I want to put it on the right hand side. Okay, so there's our, there's our cut. I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't worry about that. That's fine. There's going to be some visual glitches because I'm not. I haven't really got it quite right yet. But <laughs> I did it on the bus. <laughs> anyway, 
So, okay, so now we need to sh actually surface some line items here. So to do that, I'm just going to add a line item. So this is like the traditional cart page that it, it ships with. So now we've got a line item, and if we refresh, we've still got it. So the way we access that is just, um, actually, I'll just close that for now, is just purely through an each. So each uh, spree dot current order dot line items as Okay, so now we can see like that's kind of like the API for accessing the line items in the current order. It's super simple, very like declarative. So because uh, Spree Ember is all built on um, Serp Foundation, uh, I'm just going to quickly roll together some like half decent looking markup. Um, and also to note, like you can pull out Zurb Foundation really easy with just a single um, line in your Rock file or Ember CLI build file. I think that's what you said it was called, Jamie. That's what it's called now, yeah. So you can use whatever CSS framework you want. It's it's not opinionated about anything like that. Small three. Sorry, again, I know this is kind of boring, but it's part of the job. OK, so we got like some markup. You can get rid of my little high. And just because I know Spree pretty well, um, I kind of know how all these things are named. But it's, if, you, if you need a reference as to like how to access things, you, I mean, you can always look in the Ember Inspector, and you can always just look at the model files. Um, but then again, you can also look at some of the components that access these things. So for example, if I want the name of something, I know I have to go through the variant because a product has many variants. Um, if I want the image, you know, I got to go through the various things. Oops. Sorry, again, my Vim is a little slow today. Okay, and yeah, there's a, there's a few things that you can do to access the price, but um, I'm just going to do the display amount, which is exactly sort of what that line item costs, not taking like taking into account uh, the the quantity and all of that stuff. So there we have it. We've got like the line items and stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of like some function there. Now. The biggest thing is that we need to make it slide out because I promised that I it would slide out. So this is uh, everyone's got kind of their own way to do this, but there's like some stuff that comes with Spree Ember that you can use. So Okay, so that's hidden it, and then if we add the class active, is that too small? You guys can kind of read that. If I add the add the class active, now we can see it. So super easy. But um, what I'm going to do is in my component just do a class name bindings. And I'm just going to bind to the actual Spree object, the Spree service that you can access within all the components. And I'm just going to do side cart open. And I'm just going to map that to an active class. Um, OK, cool. So what we need to do now is we need to make this active whenever we add to cart. So uh, we need to be able to access whatever's happening on this page. So to do that, what we're going to have to do is actually access the route file for this page, which isn't installed. So 
that's cool because Spree Ember actually comes with um, some generators for that stuff. And that's going to install all of the routes on the, uh, on the app. So now I can go in to the route file. I can go, OK, so this is a product show page. Um, and on this out, add to cart function, in the success callback, we're transitioning to the cart page. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this.set. And because the routes have access to the spree service as well, um, I'm going to add it here. And we want to make this unconditionally true whenever a successful add to cart happens, so that should be just fine. OK, so again, I wouldn't worry about that. That's just the, some overflow stuff. <laughs> I can probably fix that. I, I'm not going to. Um, just imagine that it looks good. So OK, so that's how, you, that's how you do that. Now, the other thing that we want to do, obviously, is to make it so that when you click this, this is actually toggling. So to do that, we uh, need to be able to access this navigation component and be able to add an action to its actions hash. Now, again, that's not something that ships with, uh, with Spree Ember by default, so you have to install it through a generator. Um, so you just add the components. So this is what I mean by it's completely bendable. It's all just classic Ember code. Um, so any Ember developer who knows what they're doing can totally just rip on it, um, which is kind of the, you know, the vision for it. It's, it's just supposed to give you a bunch of stuff to get up and going really fast, but ultimately you can do what you want. So uh, now I'm going to go to the Spree Navigation, and I'm just going to extend it. I'm going to do toggle side cart. Oh. And then in here, uh, I'm just going to do a toggle property. And like if I was doing this um, in a super robust and nicer way, I'd probably declare this property on the spree service, like reopen it and do that in an initializer. But you know, Ember's smart enough to know that if that's null, make it true, and then from there we got true and false. So I think it's fine for now. Um, oh, thank you. Um, okay, cool. So now I can just go back to my templates and find that spree navigation template and. Because this is foundation, I just I, I know that foundation won't make that link look good unless I have an A tag. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to do action toggle side cart. Okay, and now we've got our toggle working. So there we have it. But I did promise that the thing would slide. So we got to do that. Ta-da! <laughs> so there we go. Single page ecom, 20 minutes. <laughs> no issues. The other thing, just really quickly, I'll show you guys this, this checkout. It's kind of cool. So basically, you click checkout, Spree will advance the order to the, the checkout state. And then once you're on the checkout page, it's a fully reactive single page checkout that you can program as per the state of the order. And when the state of the order changes, you can react to that change and show different things on that same page. So basically, it's, you can do it all through just templating if you want to. So if I open up the checkout, um, and not in my <coughs> templates. If you open up the checkout, you can see that we can bind the class of the current state of the checkout to the form so we can fade things in and fade things out when we need to. We can actually show the current state uh, you know, in the legend. We've got a spree current order errors base sort of outlet, which acts as somewhat like a flash message. Um, and then we can do things where we can say, 
if the checkouts is an address, which is actually a, a bool that Ember FSM adds to that service based on its current state. It's like a dynamic bool. Uh, we can kind of program our checkout in this like really declarative uh, way. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how it's turned out, but it's all very beta mode at the moment. So part of the reason why I'm here talking about it is because I want to get people to start using it and to start making stores with it so that we can really battle test it and make it uh, really, really solid. So, so yeah, that's everything. Uh, any questions? So the key of it is this, uh, this Spree AMS gem, um, which essentially just locks into the existing Spree API and uh, adds a, a sort of a, a new s subset of routes under API. So it's like API forward slash AMS. And then basically all of these, uh, all of these endpoints respond exactly like the Spree endpoints, but they respond with a serialized version. So it's, um, it's kind of a way of standardizing Spree's crazy API into a way that Ember can consume really easily. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I've never used Spree so long. Right. Yeah, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's, it's all good. Something like another RESTful API? Uh, OK, so yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Um, Maybe the thing the thing about Spree though is that it, the way it links all of its models together and, and the actual data layer of Spree is uh, is very big and there's a lot of stuff going on and it doesn't really one to one with other things like Shopify uh, because I've had to do some work importing products from Shopify or like from Lightspeed or something like that and it's never quite the same structure so I think you'd probably have a pretty hard time making it work with not Spree back. In. But I think it might be like a good reference point to like maybe build something for a different ecom framework. I don't know. Uh, I played with Magento back in the day, but my open those computer couldn't handle the amount of files. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the cool thing about Spree is it's not Magento. <laughs> it's Rails and it's all open source and there's nothing weird. It's you can hack it to bits. It's great. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it does. It works with Stripe, um, and that's because there's this Spree gateway gem. And what it does is it essentially provides wrappers for all of the payment gateways or all of the most popular payment gateways. And Spree has kind of generically mod modeled the payment gateway. And then you just specify which sort of variant, which subclass of that gateway you're going to use. So um, where does it? They've got like a list of all the gateways that they uh, that they uh, sort of work with. So these are these are most of them. I think there's a couple others that you can get working with Spree as well. So yeah, it's a good way to get going with Stripe really quickly. Even if you just need to accept Stripe payments, and you, but you don't want to write all of the stuff around it and integrate directly with the gem, you can just use Spree and uh, and just use that small part of Spree. So yeah. Yep. So. When you were building the, the sidebar and you were pulling information about the state from different components, does that mean that the component's holding the state or is it listening to a global state and then passing it through? So it's not really a best practice in Ember to just inject the service into everything. That's kind of the older way of doing stuff, but that is what we're doing with this. Um, <laughs> which I, I'm personally kind of cool with because Spree basic the, the Spree service basically informs the entire application of the state of the Spree backend for that current user. And there's a lot of things that need to know about that. Routes really need to know about it. Um, and there's lots of co components that need to know about it. And I could have made it so that you pass all of that state in like as sliced down as possible. But for the beta and for the very first version, I thought it was fine just to sort of have it passed into the components on a global level. So. Jamie? Are you um, so are you in conversation with the Spree team about this? Are they aware of it? They, they dig it? They're aware of it. There's actually, um, so 
I've done a lot of stuff with them. They're in Washington and they used to come um, hang at the old office that I used to work for a lot. And they were always talking about redoing the front end and making the front end really good. But to them, the biggest priority was redoing the back end. So this guy, Ryan Big, a Rails guy, started on that, trying to port it to Ember and basically had a gut full of it. And then there's kind of like this hanging branch on Spree of like some Ember stuff that kind of works. But for me, the biggest thing was like doing the front end first because I, I want my customers to have an amazing experience. I don't really care about the back end too much. So I kind of took this different approach and it meant that I only needed eight endpoints and now it's something that sort of developers want a lot more. I think the users of Spree really want a nice back end, but the developers really want to give a really good front end. So, Yeah, from what I remember, I haven't used Spree in six, seven years, something like that, but yeah. I remember the back end being quite complex because it does so much. Well, it's, it was uh, kind of awful, um, but it's recently got a lot better. And I can actually show you if you're interested. Um, it looks a lot like Shopify now, and it feels really, really nice to use. Um, so the default login for Spree is always spree at example.com. This is like the, the seeded user. And then the password is spree123. So this is the 3.0 backend, which is actually pretty nice. I think there's some Angular going on under here. I haven't actually pulled it apart yet. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool. And as you can see, there's lots of, lots of data modeling. Um, but yeah, it's come a long way in the last that many years. But sorry, to a answer your original question, yeah, they are, uh, they are aware of it. And they're working on a V2 API. And there's a, a lot of talk about it. And then at one point, I just jumped in and was like, hey, also, I have made this thing. And they were talking about maybe adopting it as, just as the Spree V2 API. Um, but then JSON API dropped. <laughs> and we uh, had another really big chat about that. And it turns out, I think we're moving towards doing the next Spree API in JSON API really strictly. So it's just going to work out of the box. And I'm not going to have to look after that one gem anymore. <laughs> so yeah, it, Spree API is going to get a lot better for uh, single page apps. Yeah, any other questions? All right, thank you. Thanks very much, guys. <laughs>